principal DCA and inside partner Ikigai Law. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Vikram Rangala, the Chief Ohana Officer, Zeppe, who would be moderating today's session. And also, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Gajesh Nayak, the founder and project lead, Polly Gudge. I would request all the delegates to keep posting your questions on the chat box, and they might pick up a few at the end and answer to your queries. Over to you, Mr. Rangala. Thank you, Swati. Gajesh, I am really excited to talk to you. Uh, yes, I've been following you. your YouTubes and, uh, and seeing you in the news. So let's get right to it. Um, you have founded and are running a company called Polygaj, which is, I think, now going to be rebranded to Gudge Finance. Is that is that correct? Yes, it is now rebranded to Gudge Finance. Yes. Gudge Finance. Well, let's just start with the first question. What does Gudge Finance do? Yes, sure. So uh, formerly known as Polygaj, uh, like, uh, back then it was a Polygon native project. Then we rebranded it to Gudge Finance and started expanding to different chains like Ethereum and Polygon uh, and Avalanche. And uh, like the uh, things we offer in Polygaj, uh, sorry, Gudge Finance are one auto compounding vaults, then NFT marketplace and NFT farming, which is like completely new concept on Avalanche and Polygon. And then we have uh, two more pro products, which are uh, King of Elephants and, and Jungle Pools. Now, apart from that, like we are, we are soon launching NFT staking and NFT gallery. Okay. Now you've just, uh, anybody who's a crypto newbie watching you kind of, I think in about three sentences lost most of us, uh, with at least <laughs> part of all the different things you're doing. So can we break it down a little bit and say, what was the first project that you started with? That, that was the first thing that Polygutch did. Sure. So first trip Polygon did was uh, we launched our liquidity mining program where people people were uh, earning guts for providing liquidity to guts pets. That was the okay. first thing. Then we then we started like launching different stuff. Like second product was jungle pools. Then uh, then we launched I think king of elephants and NFT marketplace auto compounding vaults and and recently we launched NFT farming. Okay. Explain what jungle pools and king of elephants are, because those are those are your specific uh, mm -hmm. types of. I mean, they're partly gamification, but it's also has to do with the liquidity pools that you talked about. Um, and then maybe I'll even ask you to go back and explain what liquidity pools are too. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So yeah. uh, king of elephants is the bidding game where people can bid with gush, and jungle pools are where p uh, people are incentivized with die for staking, uh, like for holding gush. So Gudge is a, when you build okay. with Gudge, it's, it's a platform for, what is it? For those of us who are newbies. Uh, yeah, kind of, yes. Like this is like the main motivation, uh, motivation of like building Polygudge uh, was to create a one-stop DeFi NFT platform on Polygon. Then we expanded our goal to make it a, one a multi-chain one-stop DeFi NFT platform. So your your platform does DeFi and NFT, and then the token is called Gudge. Gudge, very simple, yeah. and named after you, right? Huh? It's named after you. Gajesh? Yeah, it's named after me. That's a, I mean, when you get to when you're a founder, you get to name things after yourself, isn't that? <laughs> that's one of the best parts. I think. Yes. Now, so the. You know, a lot of people, they talk about, um, you know, they like blockchain, they like blockchain projects, uh, but they don't necessarily like crypto tokens or cryptocurrencies or things like that. But in your case, is yours an example of where the Gudge token is kind of necessary for running the the platform on which you can do these DeFi and NFT things? Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. And, um, and then, uh, so... Uh, DeFi, uh, that's probably the earlier thing that you started with, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And how is that going now? Has anybody taken interest? I've, I've heard, I've, I've seen things on the news that uh, people are putting value into it. You're yeah. managing uh, money. What's the, mm -hmm. what's the latest on that? How's it going? Sure. So currently our total value locked is about uh, $1.2 million in Dutch finance. And, and yes. And that is all in what token? One point two million dollars worth of? Uh, these are like 
uh, in Gutch and also some some are in WBTC and and some are in like Ethereum. Right? Yeah. Okay, so you, you're managing some funds in wrapped Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the Gudge token now you launched it in a way that um, has a it has a uh, I'm sorry, y you launched it with basically just putting it out there as a project, right? I mean, it didn't have you didn't put any like half million dollars of funding in to sort of boost the value of the token initially, did you? I mean, I'm assuming oh, you don't I'm have half million. I didn't, like I didn't raise any okay. funds for this, and yeah. So the funds came in how? Just organically, people found interest and value in the project, and they put it in. Sure. So then, like after liquidity mining, we started yield farms where people people deposited like WBTC Ethereum. And then uh, they would have earned, uh, earned, earned gudge, and they they were charged like a, a participation fee of four percent. From there, like we crowdfunded the whole project, and and we started like uh, hiring people and building building stuff on it. Okay, and slow down. You've just done. Thing. Now I want to know more about this because this is this is fantastic. Okay, so you launched the project. You had a website. You put the word out in various ways, right? And so people joined and they bought the token. Why would I buy the token? Why did people buy the token? Yeah, so uh, like at the beginning, people bought it to provide liquidity and earn more gudge. And then like after that, like we, we created these uh, utilities like jungle pools, then uh, then king of elephants and, and like NFT farming, NFT marketplace and auto, auto compounding vaults. OK. And you know, this is a side note, but before I before people start thinking that you've just created a game and it just happens to have money kind of coming in in a sort of unregulated way, you've actually gone out and sought independent audits of your finance of your of your platform, of how everything is run, and you've passed those audits. Isn't that correct? And all of that's available on yes. your website. Tell us more about that. Yes, yeah, sure. So so audits were done like very so, so we got all the audits from Solidity Finance to secure up, like, like they have audited projects which are now securing around a one billion dollars, and like we thought, like going with them would be a better option. So, yeah, like all the smart okay. contracts from Dutch Finance are audited. Audited and passed the audits, correct? Yes, passed the audits. Would do you feel? I mean, I know you're the founder and 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 all that, but is it safe to put money into Gudge and keep it there? As, as, at least as per the audit. Yeah, yeah, as per the audit. Per the audit. <laughs> Correct, right? And why did you choose to get audited? Yeah, so like just to clear a doubt that our smart contract doesn't have any any like exploitation fun uh, like any any fun any malicious function, like we got an audit so that like even even public can trust our smart contracts. Okay. This is because um, I don't know if you've watched the rest of the session, but uh, just before this session, we had uh, two uh, members of the Rajya Sabha speaking about the need for regulation. Obviously, that's the discussion that's going on in the crypto industry is how we want regulation. You've been self-regulating by getting independent audits, by um, uh, doing other things like that. Do you have any uh, opinion about the need for regulation? And um, and how crypto investors and I mean crypto founders, crypto companies can self-regulate in the meantime. Uh, I have not yet like uh, not yet like went deep into regulations right now. So so I I would be like not the best person to answer it. Okay, but you did it on your own just because what you just felt an, uh, that it was the responsible thing to do. Uh, like doing audit, uh, getting getting audit. getting the audits. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a better thing to do. Yeah, okay, that's really cool because, um, I, I I'm not gonna make a big deal of this, but some people are watching and they probably uh, some people have probably seen you in the news before. Um, how old are you? Can I ask? Yes, I'm thirteen. Like turning You're 14. thirteen. Yeah, turning fourteen. Uh, like this December. Fourteen in December. Yeah, this is wonderful. So, um, you know, I mean, it, it is unusual. Um, it, you know, congrats on, on doing this much, but uh, I'm not going to go make a big deal out of it. But I do want to ask, 
when did you first discover blockchain? Do you remember that? Do you remember your like first moment when you you heard about Bitcoin and you went, oh wow. Like, did you have one of those moments? Like, this is really cool. Ah, uh, yes, sure. So, so my my crypto journey started in like uh, 2020, uh, September 2020, and when I attended a workshop on on blockchain and basics of uh, Bitcoin and blockchain, then my interest uh, interest like uh, in crypto grew from there, and I started like learning Solidity, then then diving uh, like diving into more concepts of of uh, the three. And like, uh, and then like to get get more experience and exposure. Like I I did freelancing for like before launching Dutch Finance. Okay, now September twenty twenty. It's just just one year ago, right? Yes, exactly one year. Yeah, ago. so this is kind of your first anniversary of of being in in the world of Bitcoin and blockchain. When did do you remember when you first heard about Bitcoin and what you thought at that time? Yes, uh, I had heard about Bitcoin. I think in two thousand and eighteen, nineteen, where like people were discussing in in like uh, WhatsApp groups about Bitcoin. Like some people was the scam. Like uh, the pricings are so high, and like even the pricing was so high. And I like I I only understood the stock market understanding where you can't buy fractional uh uh fractional stock, and like yeah. in Bitcoin, like you can put like any amount, like ten rupees. Uh, sorry like 100 rupees 200 rupees and just like just invest in it yes. yeah uh, yeah so you heard about it as an investment thing um and then when you learned about bitcoin and the absolute scarcity the 21 million bitcoins and no more and that it's run on something called blockchain did it make sense to you right away or did it take a while for it to make sense you were I guess you would have been ten years old when you first heard about it, right? Yes, I I first have heard about it about uh, like when I was ten, but like mm. like I I I got to know about this twenty million supply and all like when I uh, in September. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so you're in, really everything's happened in the past year. Yeah. So exactly. I I I understand it took you about. Three months to learn Solidity, which is, you know, it's a pretty fast pace. Some people take longer, some people take, you know. How was it for you? Did was it an easy language? Did you have any background in programming before then? It's so, uh, like Web three frustrated me, and as smart contracts are like really revolutionary. The more I, the more I learned about it, the more more made me explore uh, explore it. So also like. Uh, uh yes yeah, so i had like uh, a programming experience and all so before before crypto like i i started my programming journey 6 years back when like when i started with a programming language called called scratch it is a block block coding language and yes from there like i started learning different programming language like c c++ java advanced java python html css javascript and like uh, like i yeah, so I I don't even remember like, uh, like yeah, yes. So. Dude, you're you're <laughs> full stack. You're a full stack developer, pretty <laughs> yes. much, right? Those are the core, all the way from C through Java and up to the HTML. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So, of those, do you have a favorite? Like some sometimes developers have one programming language that seems to fit their brain. Is there one for you? Yes, now now Solidity is my favorite. Really, that's cool. Yeah. That's yes. Cool. And so now this is this is not directly about Polygon and, and and the industry, but just for you personally, um, Solidity can I, I'm I don't know it, so I'll, I'll be upfront about it. But I know that when you hit certain blocks when you're learning a programming language, you really want to give up, and you start to think. But you said that each time you hit a block, it made you want to try harder and and learn it even more. What what motivates you to do that? Uh, what motivates me? So, yes, so like the biggest motivation to get into crypto was that like, uh, like there is no age restriction and I can like get into into DeFi like without uh, like uh, without any yeah. So there were there were no age restrictions. So before that, I wanted to like build uh, stuff in. Uh, in financial 
uh, system like integrating payment systems like PayPal. But the only problem was that I should be 18 to build anything on in the C5 space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's frustrating, right? Because 18 is a long way. That's five years from now. Yes. So much could happen in five years. Uh, so was that a kind of relief to just realize nobody's going to stop me from from getting into this and building things in this? Yes, yes. They, yeah. yeah. So uh, now, uh, let, before we go on, just, um, oh, do you see all the people who are going, yay, yay? Uh, there's a bunch <laughs> yes, of yes. coming up. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. So now, what are the next plans for Gudge Finance? And uh, you have, there's a stable coin that was called Stable Gudge, and you're, you're about to do a name change for that. Tell us a little bit about that. What are your next plans for the company? Sure. So after, after, uh, like after getting an amazing response from the Polygon community, like our major, major aim was, was to like rebrand and evolve further. We achieved like, uh, we achieved it through, through rebranding and, and with a new UI and we made it pretty, uh, intuitive for the users to get benefits from, from our products. So like, we want to keep building, building, and keep uh, keep on the you know keep on innovating. Uh, NFT staking and NFT gallery are like two two important launches in the future. <laughs> At the same time, we are we are following uh, uh, we are following the space closely. Like like the loot project has inspired me a lot, and like mm -hmm. so. How come? Yes, uh, loot. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah, tell, tell, tell everybody a little bit about Loot and then why it inspires you, if you don't mind. Yes, so Loot is uh, like, uh, okay, for, for newbies, it's just a text file. 8,000 uh, text file, which are which are made into NFTs and put into, uh, like, where where people are buying it for Ethereum. And... And, and yeah, that's like a basic definition for, for users. And like the way it fascinated me was to like, uh, like, like the plans they have to uh, create like the game, uh, games with like these characteristics are like pretty awesome. So like moving for this, like on, on the stable guy side, uh, we are bringing something exciting to the space and like, we will, we will do the announcement soon. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, now, so when you when you make these plans for Gudge Finance, you talked about having your social media community. Your you know you have you seem to be listening a lot to people. Do you, are you driven more by what you find interesting and cool and would like to just do because it's your company and you can do whatever you want? Or is it half, you know, people are asking for this or I think people want this out there, so I'm going to provide it to them. Which are which of those are, are the drivers for you right now? This so like creating the products which are like currently needed, uh, needed for the space are like top priority and yes, that's like the main motivation, right? Do you think ever about beyond the space, beyond the crypto space uh, and the need that people have who, you know, maybe aren't really into crypto or they're just buying their first Bitcoin because they've heard that Bitcoin is a kind of stable place to store value. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, you've got a nice head start on, on a lot of people, you know, being at this point at, at your age. You know, and let's hope you have a nice long career to look forward to, including after 18 when, when the government finally lets you do everything you want. But yeah. do you think that what you're doing at Gudge Finance five years yeah. from now could have impact on people outside the crypto community, just in the general public? Do you think crypto and, and companies like yours can impact people who maybe aren't even working in crypto or interested in crypto? Uh, I think like this is... Uh... Yeah, I don't think so. Like, this is like more of like people who have got uh, like understood the uh, understood the DeFi space, and they are they are going more deeper. So it is like so. Gush Finance is uh, after uh, I don't know how to put it into words, but 
but it is it is uh, advanced for a new user to understand so yeah. absolutely it's advanced for me i'll be honest <laughs> um you know and uh now the thing is though uh, your way of expanding would be for more people to be able to either more people get educated enough to understand at the level that they need to to understand defi and nft and then you know staking and then liquidity pools and all, you know all the other liquidity mining and all these other things either more people get educated or companies like zpay and gudge finance find ways to simplify it so that even somebody who doesn't want to get all that education can access it which do you think is going to happen in the future for the industry and for you yeah, so currently uh, like educating people about about like more of defi nfts like these these sector are like the top priorities for like getting more users into the crypto space and even you know for sol solving that like i'm i'm starting my podcast like it's called the gut show where i will be uh like talking to many people uh like like many leading uh leading uh leading people in the uh, in the defi nft space and they will be talking about like different things like daos and and like more things here I think I, I I can't wait for that. I've already been um, since I found out we were going to be doing this session. I've been on your YouTube channel, and you've already been doing a lot of education. Um, you you give honestly. Uh, I don't mean to flatter you, but you give some of the best explanations of Bitcoin, Ethereum, some of these others uh, that that are out there on YouTube. So I, here's a plug for your YouTube channel for sure. But um, did you get into educating people because? you found that there were a lot of your friends and others who who had trouble understanding it what what drove you to start the youtube channel sure so initially like i had a plan to like uh, first of all educating people about about coding then i uh, like i think yeah so <coughs> so at the beginning i think this was i started my uh, youtube channel 3 years back where but i was teaching crypto then i took a small break uh, break uh, uh, like as as i had school and all so then then after the pandemic started i i started creating like i restarted my youtube channel like and like started creating different videos on on coding then chatbots and and after that uh, after i think in october i started creating videos about about uh, blockchain and crypto Do you do you like teaching what you learn? Yeah. Does it help you learn stuff? Yeah. Yes, please. I my first career was in teaching actually most of my career I was a, a college professor and I often would choose to teach a class on something I really wanted to learn more about and having to teach it to somebody else made me learn faster. Does that happen for you? Do you feel that uh yes that Okay, I'm learning something. I'm going to be explaining it to so and so next month, so let me learn it really well now. Do you do that? Yes, like it it helps a lot to like when you teach some uh like someone then the like like you learn more from that. Actually, that's I I think a a lot of people watching are, you know, uh they're probably wondering what are your time management secrets? What are your quick learning secrets? Uh I bet you that's one. Do you have any others cuz you've done a lot in in just one year? Do you have any like methods for managing time, getting things done quickly? Uh like there is no shortcut actually but uh, but yeah so in the morning like my daily routine is to like in the morning I do my school stuff and in afternoon and evening I work on my projects. Okay. Does it help you um do you get your school stuff done more quickly because you're eager to get it done and then go go to your project? Just like I like uh, like due to pandemic like there is no uh, not much writing stuff so most of them is like watching videos and like uh, doing homework which is like not much but yeah. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. Now you know you've uh, I'm going to change to a couple of lighter questions if that's okay. Um but i may want to come back to a couple of things you, you that you're doing right now so one is you know you you're obviously with youtube and just probably in your personal life you have to explain crypto 
even Bitcoin, blockchain, and then what Gudge Finance is doing to people all the time, right? Including you've recently had to explain it to reporters. Is it easier to explain all this stuff to like your classmates, people your age, or is, is it easier to explain crypto to a 10 year old or a 40 year old? Uh, I think it is easy to explain a 40 year old because at least he like, if he has a, uh, as a C5 background, then, then it is like more easy to explain him the, uh, the DeFi. Uh, <laughs> how many 40 year olds do you think have a centralized finance background i think most of them have like at least they have like uh, uh at least they have invested in some uh, mutual funds or stocks i see i see yeah yeah well I, i'm i'm closer to 40 so i i'm it, it's <laughs> nice of you to say that but um do you have classmates and and people your age that uh are are into the same thing do you talk to them about it uh i have not yet met my classmates so i am i'm still yet to yet to get their reaction on this oh do you so you don't uh in school you don't really talk about uh gudge finance too much ah no no no, no. like everything everything is online so so yeah <laughs> okay so if they find you online then they know about it and if not uh they just know you as gajesh <laughs> from their class yes 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 Yes, but most That's of them are aware cool. that I'm building, <laughs> building the stuff. M most of them are what? Uh, most of them are aware that I'm building something. Something. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, Swati. So um, I actually just wanted to ask, uh, maybe do we have a few more minutes, a couple minutes, Swati? Well, we have three more minutes to go. Three more minutes. Let me just ask you then um, uh, a couple of quick questions. One. Uh, you've been building all this on Polygon. Uh, I know Sandeep yesterday, um, he tweeted and uh, you replied also. He said uh, the real strength of, of uh, Polygon is the users. I want to know, have you met the leadership at Polygon at all? Yes, I met most of them. And Okay, cool. But but I I, I won't miss a chance to like uh, meet them again. I hope uh, I hope they're watching some of them, and uh, maybe we can uh, set up something. I would love to join that call too. Hey, I'm seeing that also. So, um, and also speaking of Twitter, um, I noticed your profile. Uh, your profile photo is really cool. It's the Godfather, the theme of the Godfather <laughs> in the movie. It just so happens that Zepay CEO Rahul Pagadipati, um, he is a huge. The Godfather is his favorite movie, and Ethereum is his favorite crypto. He loves Bitcoin, but he really loves Ethereum. Um, he's kind of known for actually, he's bought some Ethereum every day for over two years now. He's just been slowly dollar cost averaging into it. Yes, so, um, and uh, his Twitter handle is ETHUS. So, um, and yours is, uh, y your nickname is Gajesh.eth also, I think you've got, you've got an Ethereum domain. So. Um, yeah. I just wanted to know, would you like to meet Rahul sometime since you yeah, seem to share sure. a love of Ethereum and the Godfather and there aren't too many people who have that, <laughs> those kind of loves. So, yes, yeah. yes, for sure. Actually, so um, uh, he actually was an entrepreneur around your age also or, or getting into it. Um, I met him because he, he was my student in college. So around when he was 19, he started his first company, uh, moved to Hyderabad for three years. Uh, and then um, it's still going. It's called Anion, and it's got about 400 employees in Hyderabad now. Um, but yeah, he was 19 when he started that. So you guys might have some stuff to talk about. So, yes. Um, yes. I guess, uh, Gajesh, honestly, it's been uh, just a really delightful talking to you. I hope we'll, we'll talk yes, more yes. just offline. Um, is there, I guess I'd like to ask you if you could close by just a simple question. There, there are a lot of people out there who are parents who are watching right now. Mm -hmm. yes. What would you say to parents about letting their kids get into crypto, encouraging their kids to learn about blockchain, encouraging their kids to, is it safe, first of all? Is it something that they should, you know, encourage? Um, you know, do you think a lot of kids your age um, have interest or could have interest in this, in this industry, in this field? and maybe they just haven't learned about it or asked their parents about it. What would you say to parents right now about encouraging their kids to get into blockchain? I think like for, for this, 
like I don't have a best answer for this, but uh, but, like, but let's say your parents. Your did your parents uh, encourage you, discourage you? Did they say this is stupid, take up cricket or something like that? I don't know. They they encouraged me a lot of uh, to get into uh, a new thing, which is like evolving really fast. So uh, yes. Mm. So this is the new. Is this the next big thing? Yes. Do you think? Uh, uh, and a kid who who gets into it at age thirteen is going to have an advantage when they're at twenty five and and looking for a career and all that stuff. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Gajesh. Swati, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you so much, Vikram, for such an engaging session with Gajesh, and thank you so much, both of y'all, to. Uh, you know, uh, come over here and make this possible, right? Have have a great day ahead, and thank you so much once again. Thanks. Yes, thanks. Yeah. Thank you.